It's been a month now since I brought home the 1979 Jeep Cherokee Chief. And in that month, I have spent a lot of time here in the garage fixing things, upgrading stuff, overcoming challenges. And today in this video, what I thought I'd do is bring you with me here in the garage. Let's take a look at all the stuff I've done. Some of the things that have just come up with like, wow, did that really happen? And some of the exciting stuff that we're getting ready to do to the Cherokee. This is going to be a ton of fun. Plus I'll explain what all this stuff on the table is all about. It's all related. And I think you're going to find it really exciting. We're going to have a good time here in the garage today, guys. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and it is so good to be back in the garage with you guys. I did take the last two weeks off from filming just to kind of recharge my batteries a little bit, but in that time, I have really gotten to know the Cherokee Chief pretty well. She has a lot of interesting things that have been done to her over the years, and she's definitely a girl. She just feels like a girl that baby blue, uh, but I haven't come up with a name yet, so that'll come to me. But if you have a suggestion, let me know down in the comments below. Now. There is a lot that has been done to this Jeep that it was done right, and some of the things that are questionable, and there's been some interesting things that I found both mechanically and cosmetically, and I've just been doing a ton of work, and so today I'm just gonna take you around with me. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. It's just really interesting, and I'm really excited about what's to come. I've got some cool upgrades we're gonna do here very soon, which we'll talk about, and then I'll explain why I have this old camping gear up here. This is gonna be a ton of fun. All right, let's go look at the new wheels and tires that I put on the Cherokee Chief. So when you are out on the trail, a good set of wheels and tires is super important. And if you go back and look at the video we did when we introduced the Cherokee, you'll see that there were some painted black pro comp wheels that were chipping off and there were some old Goodyear tires that were a little worn and they were starting to balloon out a little bit. And so what I've done is I've replaced them. And what we have here are some American racing slotted wheels that have this fake beadlock ring around it. And I love the look of of these wheels because it's a little bit of the classic with that slotted uh, groove in there and then the beadlock gives it more of a modern look. I love them. I think they're awesome and you know here's the thing about wheels for an old Cherokee Chief with uh, manual locking hubs is there are not a lot of wheel options out there so I was thankful that I found something that I really liked. I hope you guys like them. I think they're pretty cool. And then I've got those wrapped in some 33 inch Cooper STT Pros and 33 inches is as big as I probably plan on going with this thing. Right now I can't go any bigger with the 4 inch lift but you know, you can do a lot with 33 inch tires and the Cooper STT Pros, uh, you know, I've run them a few times on my Wrangler in a 35 and a 37 and these tires have served me really well off-road. I have never had a complaint off-road with these tires. On-road, they're a little noisy and they get a little rough after a little while, but off-road, uh, they're gonna be a huge advantage uh, for helping me hit the trails when we get out there. And the other thing I like about these tires is that you just have a really aggressive look. They just look good, I love them. Now, I talked about the four inch lift. So there is a four inch lift on this thing and it does ride a little stiff. And that's to be expected with a leaf spring setup. But I have ridden in a Wagoneer before that just kind of coasted down the road nice and smooth. Uh, was not as jarring as this is. When you're at highway speed, it's fine. But when you're on a slow road, it just, uh, you know, it lets you know it's there. Um, so maybe I'll f experiment with some other leaf spring options. I know some are softer and some are harder. But one thing I did do was swap out the shocks because they were pretty tired. And so I put some Skyjacker shocks in there and it hasn't really made a huge difference, but at least I have peace of mind knowing that I have brand new shocks in there. Now, one thing I noticed specifically right here on the driver's front when I was swapping them out, that the shock bracket only had one and a half bolts holding that shock bracket in place. It's bolted with four bolts, and uh, so it was wobbling around. And so that's a big deal, but not a massive deal. I mean, you can technically, you can drive around without a shock, but here's the thing. On the other side of the frame rail, those four bolts go through and hold the motor mount on. So the motor mount was not completely secured either because there was only one and a half bolts holding them on. So that was an interesting find and something I'm glad I fixed. If I hadn't replaced the shocks, I probably wouldn't have come across that until 
no, it was probably too late anyway. So that's what's going on with wheels and tires and shocks. Uh, let's go pop the hood. Let's do a cold start. I think that'll be cool. I'll show you just how well this starts up when it's cold. And then we'll talk about some of the things that I've done to the engine. Okay, now I have not started the Jeep in the last two days, so this is truly a cold start. And usually one pump of the gas and a turn of the key and she'll crank right up. We'll see if uh, that still holds true today. Oh yeah, look at that. It runs so much better than it did when I first brought it home. Now the exhaust is a little louder than I'd actually like and so I may do something to quiet the exhaust down a little bit, but she drives down the road so nice. She purrs like a kitten, cruises right along, no problems. Uh, let me pop the hood and show you just some of the basic things that we've done so far. All right, now let's talk about a lot of the mechanical and electrical gremlins that I've encountered and some of the things that we've done to make this Jeep run so much better. I don't want to bore you, but I've spent a lot of time under this hood and underneath the Jeep and chasing stuff. We'll just talk a little bit about that. So when I drove this home, we drove 150 miles home, uh, it ran a little rough and it was definitely loud because there was an exhaust manifold leak. And so we replaced the exhaust manifold and so now it's nice and quiet down the road, but it still ran a little rough. In fact, actually, after we did the exhaust manifold, it ran really rough and that was because one of the spark plug cable wires was not seated all the way and uh, it took me a little while to figure that out once we figured that out it was all good uh, it's had a complete tune-up so all new plugs and wires and cap and air filter and fuel filter we put a new battery in um, and i just i chased a lot of wires that i could find that were you know going nowhere we had a bunch of those and kind of started to clean things up but still a lot of electrical stuff that needs to be done the rear driver's brake light does not work the tail light actually works but the brake light does not work it's not the bulb and then the front driver's headlight is a little dim and so I've chased the wire a little bit. I cannot figure out what's going on. It looks fine. There's a bad ground somewhere. I've got to sort that out. Uh, oil leaks. Uh, I found at least one oil leak. There might be a second one under the transfer case. I haven't figured it out yet, but right now I know the brake booster is leaking. It has an upgraded brake booster and uh, it, the brakes are solid. They're great. Uh, but that thing is leaking and it's going all the way back down underneath the engine bay uh, and back into the transfer case. And so I don't know if, the, if there's another leak or if it's just from that one. So once we get that either rebuilt or replaced, we'll sort that out. Um, let's see, what else under here uh, do we need to worry about? Uh, the windshield washer uh, does not work and I haven't figured that out. I did buy a whole new windshield washer box and a pump that'll go here, uh, but I cannot get power to uh, the actual app. Uh, the pump. So once I get that sorted out, that will go in. It'll be nice to be able to wash my windows. I do have a Howell fuel injection system that I was planning on installing. It's actually in a box right over here. Fuel injection will make it nicer off-road. It'll idle better. It'll get better fuel economy, but I'm not in a hurry to install it because it runs so nice right now. So that may come later on. I also have an aftermarket air conditioning and heating system that's going to go in this. I don't have AC in this Jeep. Uh, the heater works, uh, I guess, a little bit. Uh, it's not great, not putting out a lot of uh, flow. So this whole system will come out. That whole new system will come in. That's going to be a big job, uh, and I got to really set some time aside to do that. But uh, the other thing is this has an auxiliary fuel system. So there's an auxiliary fuel tank. I think it's about a 20 gallon tank that goes in the back where the spare tire is. It's not currently connected. Uh, the previous owner told me that when he was up in the mountains at high altitude, that the fuel pump would not pull all the way from the auxiliary fuel tank. Um, so it's not hooked up currently. And, I, and so I'm gonna hook it up. I'm gonna play around and see how it goes. Maybe all it needs is to install some electrical fuel pumps instead of the mechanical one. I don't know, we'll figure that out, but I would love to have, instead of 21 gallons, 41 gallons, because that would make the range on this thing so much nicer. Because right now, my gas mileage is about nine miles to the gallon, which is not that great. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the exterior and then we'll hop on the interior, which I've got some cool plans ready for the interior starting next week. Now, leading up to me purchasing this, I had been obsessing for months over this body style. This and the Wagoneer, I love them both, but the two-door for me is where it was at, and I was so thankful that I was able to find one that was straight. Now, I knew that it was not perfect. Uh, obviously, there is some rust. There's a little bit of cancer here and there. And so now that I've spent some time with it, I've been peeling back the electrical tape that the previous owner had put over a lot of the holes and seen what's in there now and uh, realized that uh, some of this has got to get fixed. 
fixed. I mean, could I leave the patina that people call it and just let it be? I'm in Southern California, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But for me, I just wanna bring it back to life. I wanna put it back to original. I want it to look nice. Uh, I'm not looking for some kind of SEMA show quality vehicle. This is gonna be a trail rig, uh, but I wanna make it look nice. And so uh, I talked to a couple shops and they gave me some quotes on how much of this is gonna cost and it's not gonna be cheap. Uh, especially this rust repair here on the roof uh, because it's on a curve because there's these little dimples up here it's a lot of work um, and I had thought well you know what I'll just get some mesh and sand this down and fiberglass over it and that'll be okay for a year or two or three but that's not the right way to fix something and so I'm gonna pay a professional body shop to do this right uh, eventually I'm gonna teach myself how to weld and do little stuff but even a project like this I think I want to leave to the professionals so we'll get some body work done here soon uh, and then eventually I'm going to paint it uh, and we are going to stay with the same color I love this color it's so unique it's perfect but there otherwise the body's straight I mean there's a few holes here and there there's not too much rust on the bottom in the back uh, but all in all the body's square it's straight and I love the classic styling look but we've got some work to do but next week we're gonna start on the interior let me tell you what's up now one of the first things that I did when I got this Jeep was replace the seat belt because when I went to go put the seat belt on uh, the seat belt just came right out because the fibers in the actual belt itself had just rotted away. In fact, in the entire Jeep, there was only one good seat belt. So I've swapped those out. Uh, I've got some new seat belts, at least in the front. In the rear, I've got to fabricate some brackets just to make them work with the aftermarket ones that I went with. But that was the first thing I did. The next thing I did, it was I swapped out the radio and I put in this nice new radio. Uh, this is actually a, a retro sound radio, which is pretty cool. It's got a classic style to it, but it still has Bluetooth and a lot of the cool amenities. Sounds really good. Speakers aren't bad. Uh, so I'll I'll probably leave those and then uh, and then uh, we got some big plans so this carpet here is a dark blue and I don't know if this is the original carpet or not or the original color it may very well be uh, but I bought some very nice uh, black carpet that we're gonna put in here uh, it's got a pretty thick base on it so it should help with a little bit of sound deadening uh, and that'll just be nice I'm not a big fan of this dark blue uh, and then uh, next week I'm dropping this off at an upholstery shop and they are gonna redo these tired old ripped out seats they're gonna upgrade the cushions in here they're going to redo the steering wheel should be really nice now i'm going to keep the original blue color we're going to do just a little bit of a different touch on that and i'll show you when that comes uh, but i'm excited because while these seats aren't bad they're not great either and so at least having that reinforced cushion under there is going to make driving on long trips really nice so all in all it's not too bad the dash is cracked and i knew that um, and to fix the dash is a heck of a job you actually have to pull the windshield off to get to that so someday we may uh, restore the dash but for now i'll just be staring at that crack for a while um, and then i'm probably going to repaint the dash because of this black and blue tone thing that's going on in here um, and then some other little stuff we've upgraded the handles a little bit i need to lube some of the windshield mechanisms to make those work better uh, and then the rear window there's another here's another funky thing the rear window does it's automatic and so it does go up and down uh, but if you roll it all the way down, it gets stuck. And so you can only have it come down uh, about a half inch be, or otherwise you won't be able to roll it back up. So I need to sort that out. I think it's probably just a tracking issue. Shouldn't be a problem, but all in all, I love hanging out in here. I love the classic styling of this Jeep cruising down the road, man, and just a smile on my face. Now, because I mentioned all these things that are wrong with the Jeep and so many things that still have to get done and fixed and modified and more money that we've got to dump into this thing, don't get me wrong. I love this Jeep and I'm so excited now that it's running right to get it out on the trail and go do some cool adventures. And I think what we'll do along the way is I'm just going to do more of these kind of updated videos. I know a lot of you guys aren't here to do, you know, watch trail recon for classic vehicle restorations. If there's a big project we're doing, maybe we'll do that. But I think what we'll do is just do some of these updates, which will be fun. Now at the beginning of the video, I said I had some stuff here I wanted to talk about. So what is all this old camping gear that I've got? Well, I've got some old Coleman lanterns, some kerosene lanterns got this old kerosene camp stove that you have to pressurize to use it needs a little bit of cleaning up I've got an old metal Coleman cooler which has got the metal latches I've got the little brown jug for water 
I've been finding period correct camping gear for the 79 Cherokee Chief. I think it'll be fun to do some trips where, you know what, we leave the rooftop tent and the refrigerator and the trailer and all our fancy dancy gear at home and get a little bit of grounded and just go have a cool trip with some basics. And so I've been trying to find more and more stuff. I'm gonna keep searching for it. I did get invited to a relic run uh, later this year where that's some classic vehicles and you, you know, go do a long trip and do some camping, all period correct stuff. So this will come in handy for that trip. But I think it'll be fun just to do this routinely. Uh, a lot of fun. You don't need to have all the flashy stuff. This sometimes is all you really need. Even this might be a little flashy for some people. Okay. So that's it. That's the update on the Cherokee Chief. More to come here soon. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. We'll see you in the next one.